Welcome here to morning worship here this morning from Stratton St Margaret, uh, a stone's throw away from the church and uh, literally I could almost uh, open the door of the centre uh, if I had uh, an arm which was about 10 foot long I suppose. Um, I do hope this finds you well in good hearts and in good spirits. Um, it is a great pleasure to be with you this morning. Alvine is uh, on leave at the time of this recording, um, but she will be back with us again very soon and we look forward to that and hope that she's rested and recuperated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh 
Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let's share the Gloria with one another. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candice, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both, both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week we used Psalm 23 in true lectionary style of uh, going between Psalms. Today we're going to use part of Psalm 22. Psalm 22, verse 22 to 31. In the full assembly 
I will praise you for what you have done. In the presence of those who worship you, I will offer the sacrifices I promised. The poor will eat as much as they want. Those who come to the Lord will praise him. May they prosper forever. All nations will remember the Lord. From every part of the world they will turn to him. All races will worship him. The Lord is king and he rules the nations. All proud people will bow down to him, bow down to him and mort all mortals will bow down before him. Future generations will serve him. They will speak of the Lord to the coming generation. People not yet born will be told. The Lord saved his people. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I am the real vine and my Father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit and he prunes every branch that does not bear fruit so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. Remain united to me and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. For you can do nothing without me. Whoever does not remain in me is thrown out like a branch and dries up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire where they are burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit and in this way you become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever read or looked at something and struggled to make sense of it? Maybe a book or a film. You've read it or you've watched it and you've struggled to make head nor tail of what is going on. If we were to speak honestly, uh, we might even say that sometimes when we read the Bible especially some of the accounts in the Old Testament or some of Paul's letters. We struggle to see the message. Thankfully, we have scholars and resources and indeed each other sometimes to interpret or to explain the message. This poor Ethiopian God-fearing eunuch that we read of in Acts is in that position desperately wanting to know the meaning of this passage from Isaiah, the one that he was reading so diligently. If you're eating your breakfast at the moment, uh, you might like to put your cereal down uh, or you might like to put your, breakfast, uh, your toast down. Uh, I will try to be sensitive. This chap, a eunuch, would have travelled all the way to Jerusalem to be part of this important time, to be part of this festival. However, he would not be able to celebrate it fully because he would have been seen as an outsider. This eager pilgrim would have witnessed and prayed at a distance, but as a Gentile and the fact that he was castrated and probably partially dismembered meant that he was not able to be circumcised, meant that he wouldn't have been part of that, wouldn't have been able to take part in that most important of times. He would have been seen as physically unfit or and ritually excluded. He would have been seen as and treated as an unclean outsider. 
He was not allowed to be part of what was going on during that Passover festival. That celebration of God's deliverance of his people from slavery. He was excluded. But still, through it all, through the way, though he was treated the way he was, he was still seeking God. He wanted to know more. He wanted a closer relationship with God. He studied the scriptures to find out more. As you read, Isaiah 53, it is clear to us that this prophecy was about Jesus. For example, not just the bit that was mentioned in Acts, but all of it. Imagine for one moment, though, that you are this African chap. What would you make of it? Imagine that you didn't know anything about Jesus. What would you make of it? It might not make complete sense. And you would have questions. Philip was there though, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that very moment to offer clarity, to offer an explanation, to offer this interpretation, an explanation of, of, of that passage to help clear that confusion that the man had, to take away the cloud. Philip introduced Jesus into this man's life. And it was through Jesus that it all made sense. He was the important part of the jigsaw that meant the message and the image was clear. He was the vital clue that unlocked the mystery. Now this faithful man was able to fully understand what he was reading. But as usual, there's more. Because the wonder of all of this, besides the wonder of all of this, unlike before, now this man was welcomed into God's family, right into the heart of it. God would have always been open to him, but somehow others had created a barrier. He was one of the branches on the vine. The vine that always, was always seen as the people of God, Israel. Jesus came to show that that vine had many branches and was not an exclusive club. There would be no ritualistic requirements. Jesus had shown that God's love and blessings were for all and through him all would be part of the vine. All would be part of those blessings, loved, accepted and welcomed. The Ethiopian eunuch and all those who were considered unclean or unworthy by the religious establishment were being shown that they are not outsiders in the kingdom of God. They are loved and they are welcomed. It's easy to see why this man rejoiced and wanted so keenly to be baptised when he heard the, this good news. It's easy to see why he was so overjoyed to finally fu feel fully part of God's kingdom, welcomed and loved. Jesus came to show this and Philip, empowered by the Spirit, was on hand to share this good news. It's all about Jesus. It was all about Jesus. It is all about Jesus. And perhaps there are some in the world today, some in our community today maybe, maybe even some that come online or step across the threshold of our buildings who feel like that eunuch. They may feel like an outsider. They may feel a bit confused by everything. We are called to be ready, to be guided by the Spirit, to show them the love of God through Jesus Christ and all the love, hope and acceptance and joy that is on offer, open to them. We have to ensure that we do not fall into the trap like the religious elite of long ago, that some others, that some others are unworthy and unclean, not deserving to be part of our club. That is nonsense. God's love and welcome is universal. We have to ensure that we do not complicate things and muddy the image of God through 
through bits that we add on our, for, on our rules and regulations to keep others at arm's length. And we pray that the Spirit may guide us to have the vision to be the place where we can be ready to show others the love of God through Jesus Christ, to offer others the hope and joy that that African pilgrim um, felt all those years ago. I believe, I firmly believe there are the, that there are those asking questions today, wanting to know about God, wanting to be part of that hope, wanting to find answers. People who may be a bit confused at the moment. Let us be like Philip, as individuals, as a church, as, commu as a community, ready to show them the wonder of God's welcome, the wonder of God's love, ready to show them that they and we all are part of that vine, remembering that it's all about Jesus. Amen. faith using the words of the creed we believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth we believe in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. For our response today, when I say Lord in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. God of our church. We pray today for Elvine, Mark, Lisa, Alison and Dan as our churches reopen. We pray that they may feel the same joy that we are feeling being able to continue our worship no matter where we are. Your love for us transcends any boundaries, so help us not to lose sight of that 
whether we be at church or at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate and gracious Lord, the scenes in India continue to haunt our screens as their Covid situation gets worse and worse, and Turkey beginning to head in that same direction as well. We pray today for the thousands of people who have died, and that both countries will receive the help that they so desperately need in order for cases to begin to fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. During the continued uncertain political climate, both here and abroad, we pray for our politicians and our government, particularly with local elections due to take place across the United Kingdom this week. We pray that our elected officials make the decisions that most benefit our country and that they may put aside their differences to ensure a positive outcome to the pandemic that will benefit everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray today for our emergency services who display great courage every day. We particularly pray for our ambulance service and for our hospital workers, especially those who have worked in the COVID wards. Many of them, many of them put themselves in harm's way on a daily basis. So we pray for their continued safety and that any issues that they may have are listened to and respected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of nature and renewal, with political leaders meeting recently to discuss climate change, help us to remember that we need to take better care of this world that you have loaned us. Support us to find new ways to cut down our carbon footprint in order for us to preserve what you have given us and what we may lose forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering the loss of a loved one at this time. We pray especially today for the families of the 45 people who died during the crush at the religious festival in Israel, and that they may feel your compassion and empathy during this period of mourning. In a moment of silence, you also remember those close to us who care for sick friends or relatives, have lost loved ones, or are ill themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
was traveling along, along that road and met that uh, Ethiopian chap, uh, life would have been going on. And indeed, as we've been going through our service today, uh, life is going on as you are in uh, whichever room you're uh, uh, partaking, uh, taking part in this in, uh, life is going on. Life continues to go on. We are part of eternal life and it's a great joy uh, to be sharing this with you. So thank you for all those contributed and for all of those uh, that have gathered here now. We've heard life go on and you might even be able to hear life as well. And this is what God promises, life and life in abundance. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and rest with you this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.